Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Today what we're talking about, Bill, is the deals are dropping like flies. Okay? okay. Let me explain what's going on. All right. I do a lot of new construction pre-drywall inspections. And then I do inspections when the drywalls are completed. Right. Okay? I do home inspections, you know, when people go buy it. I had six cancellations last week. I've wow. never had six cancellations. Hmm. People, people, and you know, two of them that are canceling is because of financing. I don't know. I thought rates were going down. I thought it was going to be easier. Yeah. Not, uh, anyway, keep going. <laughs> so basically, you know, people. Some people are trying to pay. You know, buy condos. They're out of state. They don't know the situation with the condos. We're gonna we're yeah. gonna touch about that. You know, we're gonna touch on that also. But what we're gonna talk about today is a reckon. This, this is a cool article. Okay. A record number of home deals collapsing in July aimed at high prices and election uncertainty. So, with this election, does it make sense? Okay, there's an election coming up, so we're not going to buy a house because we want to know who's president? That really doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> right. So, there was some stats that got put out that there is actually a slight drop in home sales during the election year. However, they make up for it the month after, in the months after the election. So basically, nobody's been doing anything until after November? Well, well, that's the pendulum that just swung over to the far side. I said a slight reduction in sales. Yeah, but does it- I think it was a, like a 5% reduction in sales. So if a Democrat wins, does it drop or does it go up? If a Republican no, wins? it has, no, it has zero no bearing. It's literally election year or not election year. I don't know, man. I don't know. It I just I, all, 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 I, all I know is everybody's canceling. I don't know why everybody's canceling their contracts like that. Well, you did mention one thing where it was um, you said that financing fell through, and yeah. that is actually a big thing for a lot of people right now. Um, you know, because there's a difference between you know the pre-approval and pre-qualified. True. You know, so and once you start going into underwriting, you start finding things that maybe you didn't know about and that are disqualifying you for your loan. So those could be some issues, you know, when you're just, you know, pre-qualified and they haven't run your credit, they haven't dove into the credit or to what's up on there, your debt to income ratio shifts or alters a little bit, you know, I mean, as, as bad as it sounds, some people do actually go out and buy things, you know, because it's tough right now. Right. You know what I mean? So they, something happens. Um, an example of what I heard of this that, that actually happened to somebody I knew, um, you know, their water heater died. Mm -hmm. You know, their furnace, their, their, their gas water heater died. Which happens. It happens. It's yeah. just a normal thing. Yeah. And they, it was $2,000 to get that, you know, with the unit and the install. You know, because it was gas. Oh, so wow. it was a lot more money. Yeah. And they had to put it on a credit card because they didn't have that cash just to, to, to give the plumber. To, to do it. So that is just a small example of what could happen that could really, you know, people's debt to income ratios are tight. Well, I, I, I know one deal that did fall through that, now that you say that, one deal fell through because the uh, husband and wife were buying a house, mm -hmm. but the daughter was going to college. This is recently, this just yeah. happened. And she needed a vehicle. Daughter's paying for the vehicle. Cosigner. Cosigner. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, people don't think about but it. But the whole thing is, she was like, but I didn't think it was going to hit my credit that fast. We're closing in a, 10 days. I just did it. So, you know, I didn't think the loan was going to hit my thing. And I told her, I said, listen, I used to be a mortgage person. I'm not a mortgage person anymore. But they looked at inquiries. Yeah. You had their inquiry on there. So they knew it was happening. So they you, know you have the money. You're basically, if you're buying a house, you just can't. Don't do anything. Do anything. Don't do layaway. Don't do anything until you close on the house. I know it's exciting. I really, really do that you see a deal, especially like right now, we've got some holidays coming up. So we're going to have some, spe I see all kinds of deals coming out now. And, you know, it's trying to stimulate some, you know, uh, sales. Just resist that urge until you close on your house, please. So that's what we're going to talk about. I want you to get started on that one. But do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Hit the bell notification and share the video. It's greatly appreciated. And comment below. I, re I reply to almost every comment. Bill, start us off. All right. So 
this basically just says that 60,000 Americans canceled their deals uh, in July. That sounds like a lot. I don't know, because it's uh, so far I haven't seen anything here that tells me anything different, so I don't know the numbers to tell you if that's high or not high. Because um, uh, here's the thing. Deals fall apart every day. They always have and they always will. People decide for one reason or another. Look at some of my customers that have decided for one reason or another that it was not financial. They just chose they didn't want to buy that house. And it wasn't anything wrong with it. The house was perfect. They just right. chose not to. It just happens. It's okay. It's your, it's, it's your house. You're purchasing it. You're allowed to make these decisions. Um, but I did, I did read from 2020, it was up 45%. I did read the that. Cancellations, the, cancellations from 2020 are up yeah. for all sales? Yeah, like basically contracts, uh, you know, 60,000 were canceled. I think the normal was like under 30 or 35,000. For new construction? For new construction. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm like, if we canceled at 45%, that means 50, almost 50% of all sales in the country stopped. That I don't make sense. No, but they're talking about 60,000, I think, of, of every home. But let's say... Yeah, I think, yeah, this is the 60,000 is for every home. But you were talking about yeah, new construction. New constructions, but, you know... Sales are up right now supposedly so. <laughs> sales of existing homes it is yeah sales of existing homes rose 0.6 percent month over month in july but fell two percent year over year so there's again there's a difference so month over month they're just comparing previous and then year over year they're looking at the 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 trailing so so you're saying july fell two percent year over year yep so we have two percent less sales this july compared to 2023 correct okay so the seasonal adjustable annual rate of four million ninety four thousand nine hundred ninety one, that's what they came up with. The lowest July level records dating back to two thousand twelve, according to Redfin. Okay, but I want to talk about that. Talk about it. So Go for it. We're at four million. We're we're over four million home sales, and we're we're talking July, right? Yep. So that's where we were ending up just over 4 million home sales in 2023 period. But this is saying 2012, right. dating so, back to 2012. But the annual sales for the entire year, a year ago, mm -hmm. for, the, for the whole year, we're only talking this is up to July, mm -hmm. was just over 4 million sales. So you're saying that... They're just making this article very juicy. So you think by you know uh, you know August September October November December we're going to be in probably five million some odd sales five we'll million sales right because we're just comp all these numbers they're doing here in my opinion is I'm just looking at this just because I know how many sales we had like mm. how many transactions took place at the end of the year tally up everything it was just over four million and then now they're saying that you know the uh, seasonally adjusted annual rates at 4,094,991. So we're just over 4 million, but we're talking July. So. All right, so but they're saying, up, so you think they're, they're comparing it to a whole year. I don't want to, I don't want right. to beat this horse to death, but I just want to make sure that we're I think they're the just right. making the stats look the way they want for the article. All right. So the te technology powered real estate firm noted pending sales also fell to the lowest level any month on record aside from April 2020 when COVID pandemic first impeded the transactions and the supply chain. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. While the average interest rate for a 30 year mortgage has dropped, which it has, yes. to 6.49%, mm -hmm. down from its 7.22% peak in May. Yeah, back first quarter, yeah. That's, so that's also a good true. thing. Yeah, yeah. So they've come down a little. The Fed hasn't changed the rate, you know, yet. And hopefully we'll get, at this next meeting, we'll get a little actual uh, drop, but it's not gonna be this, you know, it's not gonna change things that dramatically. A quarter or a half isn't gonna change things, you know, and the floodgates aren't gonna you just know, instantly right, right open now, up. Right the, now, the betting market is they might drop it three quarters of a point. And you know, the real job market, the real job numbers came up and they were like, they overestimated by like eight or 900,000, probably a million, to be honest with you. <sighs> you know, and, you know, the true numbers came out. So there was like almost a million new jobs less created than they were saying. 
I never trust those statistics anyways. I know, and they adjust them every single time. Yeah, and it's like Saturday night, they readjust Yeah, they're like, the hey, Saturday, you know, or, or you know, it's it's really Sunday at three in the morning. Yeah, it's the Super Bowl, we're gonna release the new numbers. Okay. Nobody will ever see them. <laughs> what a freaking scam everything is. It's just such a racket, man. It, it's, it's just really, you know, so home buyers are also concerned about home prices which steer near record high. They are. Yeah, they, that, that I do agree with. That I, I really do. What we're starting to, is, particularly here, you know, in Florida, we still have people moving here. It's all about supply and demand. It's the basics. You know, if the supply is low, but it is coming up, I looked at some numbers today before it was, I didn't know we were doing this article, but I just happened to start, because it's the end of the month, so I started kind of putting some numbers together to mm -hmm. kind of see where we're at. Um, and then for Pinellas County, we're at about four months of inventory right now for and, Pinellas County. But when does it turn into a buyer's market? It's six months supply? Technically, yeah. If you're at that five to six months supply, you're really pushing into a buyer's market. And it really kind of depends on where. Now, if you're looking at new construction, it's been a buyer's market for a while. And you can see that because of all the deals and the stuff that have come out and the stuff. I was just about to say Woo! that because my um, email was blowing up this morning. Because I, you know, I go to new build centers and the stuff, and then I'm like, okay, I gotta go do this inspection of this new construction home. So I go over there and I look it up, you know, I pre-look at it on Zillow, what, wherever, to get an idea of what I'm looking at when I right. get there. So I go there and then I'm like. There's freaking 15 of these houses, phantom inventory. So I go to the build center, I talk to the manager, say, hey, I have to inspect this house. Why? I thought that you guys only had one for sale. Well, no, we only market one because it looks bad if they market all 15. Okay. Phantom, you know, it's ghost inventory. Yeah, whatever, they, whatever they do for their marketing, that's their thing. Yeah. yeah. But yes, this is a, that, new construction, but also the condo. It's a buyer's market if you want to buy a condo. That's a whole different animal. Well, Woo. take two minutes and explain to them what's going on with the condos because uh, the condo market's collapsing in Florida. You know that, I know that. Yeah, there's we no did videos on it. it. Yeah, it's it's cooling, it's cooling, and it's cooling. Um, so what basically happened is there was a lot of issues. So insurance is one big thing. And then condos within a certain age and distance from a body of water that are three stories or above have to go through these milestone reports. And that's an engineer, and then they check out the structure, which is all important stuff, and I don't disagree with that. But what this is ha what, what's happened is the condo associations now are imposing these large assessments because they're either underfunded and they can't get the things fixed that they need to get fixed. And then the stuff that they're fixing, they still have to have a certain amount of reserve um, legally and to, for future repairs of, of critical items. So that's causing a lot of issues because some of these fees are insane. Thousands of dollars. You know, you'll go from a, maybe a $350, $400 association fee, which a lot of people probably think is expensive, but it depends on what you get for it. But now they're up into the 800s. You know, they've almost doubled. Plus, insurance costs in Florida just have gone up. Um, you know, the, the roofs need to be replaced. Things, the, all this stuff is just adding up and it's really stifling the condo market. It really, really is. Um, the absorption rate went down to like, or went up. It was, it was just insane, 146%. Wow. And then now it's down to like, I think the last time I looked it was 42% give or take, but I know condos prices, I'm watching them come down, 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 down. It's like a Christmas tree, especially the older ones. Yeah, the older ones, because their fees, you know, you look at them, the, the fees are up. Fees. It's just, or they don't, some people don't even know that they're gonna get an assessment, and it's really hard to get the information from the association sometimes, so you really have to push and dig, you know, to get those things, but you really need to know before you buy. So here, here's their stats. The 60,000 home purchase agreement canceled in July equals 60% of all homes under contract. How much? 16%. Oh, I thought you said 60. 16. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the good news is the supply of homes rose a whopping 14% last month, which I believe. Okay, so 16% doesn't, that's that's more understandable. And I, what I would say is how, what was the, what's the, what would be an average normal percentage? You know, which kind of like, cause like I said, they're always stuff, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna yeah. see if I can dig that out a little bit somewhere. So, so Bill has a channel that 
um, he, he does a lot of that stat stuff on it too, and we'll link it so you can check out his channel too. Um, but yeah, that's a, that would be a good one. But Bill, people are nervous about buying now. No, I, I get that, and and, I, and it's totally understandable. Um, if you're, you know, when it comes to the election, you know, we talked about the election. When it comes to the election, you know, it's not going to change overnight. That's the problem. It's, it's, it doesn't matter who gets in. It's not like they're going to snap their fingers, the election's done, and then everything's going to change. Uh, the economy's not going to switch overnight. It's going to take years. If you're, it, look at the other things. Are you can, I get it that there's, I don't want to go down a political road, but I get it. Everything's expensive right now. So mm -hmm. if you can't afford to purchase a home, you know, what I'm starting to see too is rental rates are coming down. The cost of renting is, is dropping. And some of that is dependent on the area, that there's more inventory because they've, it's coming online now, they've been building. Well, don't forget, but, I know, uh, to speak about the rental, okay, I was gonna do a whole video on it. Okay. There was one company that built, in Florida, built hundreds of rental units, mm -hmm. but out in the boondocks, the property was cheap. So they figured that everybody was going to drive there and live there and rent. Right. You know, I'm talking about hundreds of units, yes. maybe thousands of units. And they built it as a rental thing, big uh -huh. company, and nobody's moving to it. They're like, hey, I can get, for the same price, I can get something closer to town, closer to work. Right, you have to make it advantageous. If I'm gonna drive, there's a give and a take. Mm -hmm. It has to be advantageous. If I can get the same thing right down the street, even if it's older, people are going to go because they're not. They, people want convenience. Nobody wants to. I, do you want to be inconvenienced? I don't. No. I'm going to try my best not to be inconvenienced. But when it comes to so when it does come to this election stuff, I get it. Political stuff does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican in office, who controls this house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it doesn't happen overnight. And if you need a house, you need a house. If you're worried about your job, we've said this how many times, just don't buy right now. If you, if you don't have to move. Here's, here's my rule, what I, I tell I love this my one. kids. Okay, I this is what I tell my great. kids. What are you paying for rent right now? $1,000, great. How much is your mortgage payment gonna be? $3,000, great. For the next six months, pay your rent for $1,000, take the extra $2,000, Give it to me. I will put it in an account. You cannot touch it for six months. If you don't miss that $2,000 and you don't ask me for that $2,000, you know, back because you need to pay for this or pay for that, mm -hmm. you're ready to buy, a, buy house. a house. But if within that six months you say, hey, dad, listen, I need to borrow some of that money, you're not ready to buy the house. Right. That's the rule. That's a good strategy. And, and, it, and it works because you're not going to lose anything. You're still, so you're getting used to that different, you know, it might be a little tight, don't get me wrong. But the mortgage company doesn't care. The mortgage company, they could care less if you're tight or if you're uncomfortable. They want their money every month. The and, power company wants their and, money every month. And the month. insurance company will raise it to whatever they need to raise it. And, and the property taxes, I just did a whole video on property taxes that I went off because <laughs> I opened up my tax bill. I was freaking shocked at my uh, tax bill. <sighs> it, just, it, was, it was stupid. Woosah. And then my other properties, <laughs> The prices, the taxes went up like crazy yeah. because they're not homesteaded, you know? Right. But anyways, I'm not going right. to get into that tandem or anything. That's today's video. <laughs> Jesus, he's all pissed <laughs> off now. <laughs> Do me a favor. Consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It really motivates us. Check out this video right here. I think you'll enjoy it very much. And we'll speak to you on the next one. Share the video. Thumbs up. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Appreciate it. See you on the next video. All right, bye.